Sinbad, um, thank you all for making this a really memorable occasion. Uh, again, open mic. Anybody wants to say anything? Bob, I knew you'd be the first. <laughs> Let me just say this, from the years that we spent on Lost in Space, and I speak for all of us from the show, Guy Williams was the class act of our show. I've said that always and I will continually say it. Guy Williams was our friend. Guy Williams was the type of an individual that if you needed somebody to talk to, he was always there for you. The last time I was able to see him, we did Family Feud. And uh, it was just wonderful. And, and Guy was his normal, classy self. Didn't get many answers right, but that's okay. <laughs> but anyone that's ever met him or his family know what a classy individual we had the honor of knowing. So my hat goes off to him and his memory, and he's with us right now anyway. So thank you very much. I neglected to um, bring the good wishes of uh, someone who had planned to be here and speak as well on the boulevard as well as June Lockhart. And unfortunately, she had a shoulder scope and is immobile and couldn't make the trip. So she sends her best regards as does Mark Goddard, who is uh, in Boston and has a conflicting event, and they all they all sent their best. So I wanted to make sure that they didn't go by before I, I let that slip. Um, again, uh, everyone, mic is open. Help yourself <laughs> and eat. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Steve Stevens. I had the honor of guest starring on an episode of Zorro and then 10 years later had the honor of uh, being Guy's agent. Uh, his name on the show was uh, oh, sorry. That's okay, Diego right? de la Vega. We called him Dumb Dago from Las Vegas because, <laughs> because he let us. <laughs> uh, for those of you who are here who work the show will relate to what I'm about to say. As an actor, when you come in and do a guest appearance uh, on a series, it is one of the loneliest things and scariest things in the world. It doesn't matter how many credits you have. People have been working for months and it's a click and you're like an orphan child and you're very insecure. And usually the only one that talks to you is the assistant director who wants to know why you were late by two minutes. <laughs> Guy immediately spotted me. And I was all of 18 years old and came over and said, hi, I'm Guy Williams. I said, yeah, I know. I'm Steve Stevens. He says, yeah, I know too. And he says, I saw your show. I had just done a series at Disney. And he said, I want to welcome you to our set. And if you need any rehearsal, you want to go over any lines, he says, you just knock on my dressing room door. He says, I'm here for you. And that was the Guy Williams that I remember. Uh, I adored him. Uh, he almost ruined my life by setting me up with a Spitfire Italian actress named Gia Scala, who some of you might remember, who almost murdered me in the, the four weeks of our so-called affair. And he got such a kick out of that. He was a wonderful guy and uh, a man's man, uh, a friend. I'll always remember the good times and the fun times. Uh, and, and, and Guy Jr., um, how exciting it is to have gotten to know him 
over the last couple of years. Uh, he's a terrific guy too, and I'm really glad that I was able to share today with him. Thank you. I keep coming up because I keep forgetting things, so <laughs> and then remembering them. Um, I would like to also, I, the days of, of Zorro, I remember running around as a six-year-old on the set and, and among the, the various stars' homes that were really family friends and, and Brit Nose and, and uh, Don, it was, a, it was a family back then and it was Uncle Walt and, and the Disney family had a, had a, a very strong aspect to it and that set was that way. And I'd like to remember Gene Sheldon and Henry Calvin uh, and Norman Foster, the original director, uh, because they brought the thing to life and uh, were so much of Zorro. So again, I raise my glass to those folks who are here as well in spirit. Hey, <laughs> Marta. <laughs> he had, what Bob said, so much class. He taught me how to play Killer Scrabble. I don't know whether any of you know about that. But <laughs> he was a man of words. He was astounding in his vocabulary. And uh, we all know how, how bright he was, how smart and intelligent. But he loved games. And so he taught me how to play Scrabble. And no one up to this day, including my husband, can beat me in Scrabble, all because of God. <laughs> but we, when we did um, Family Feud together, we were worried about whether, because he had had a stroke and was <clears throat> still in, uh, in trying, trying to uh, get better. And uh, we were worried that uh, you know he would have a problem. He didn't, because his will was so strong and his focus was so strong. And and he, we we just we were thrilled to to do that show with him. And we loved Guy, and we still do. And it's such an honor and a pleasure to be here today, and and be a part of this. So thank you very much. Thank you, Guy. And, uh, we love you. Came over and uh, 
sewed up the whole deal because uh, it was going to be a no-go. Guy Williams Jr. went over to uh, New York City and uh, uh, they gave him the, the Bronx Walk of Fame. They, they, they put a street sign up, which is in the Grand Concourse, right now in uh, between 152nd Street and 153rd Street, opposite of Rita Moreno, which she also played in Zorro. Um, so at this time, um, from the Bronx, from the fans, uh, I would like to give Guy Williams and his family a little token from all of us. Um, Guy Williams, Junior? and her mother was visiting. Uh, I said, I would like to marry your daughter. She said, no, my daughter will not marry an actor. I said, please, please, come to see me in this play in Hollywood. Here are the tickets. Don't charge, please. She came to see me, and when the play ended, she came to my dressing room and she said, you may marry my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you are no actor. <laughs> As 
I said at the, uh, the sidewalk out there, that's the closest I'm ever going to come to catching Zorro. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I'll tell you one quick funny story. When we first started shooting the Zorro series, one of the first second days we were shooting, we had a night for night shot, which was out on one of the ranches, etc. And a guy was supposed to come riding in on the black horse with the black outfit with the mm -hmm. And uh, he did it, and Norman Foster was directing it. And they said, no, we got to do it one more time. And uh, uh, the cameraman turned to Norman Foster and says, Norman, we got a problem. I can't see Guy. He's all in black. <laughs> Norman Foster said, no problem. Guy, smile a lot. <laughs> but uh, all of you praised Guy, told a wonderful experience about him. About him. The only thing I can say after doing just 13 episodes with him, and a lot of personal appearances afterward, which were, uh, <laughs> which we had to do because of the studio. Guy was in all the 40 years I'd been in the motion picture industry, both in front and back of the camera, was one of the finest gentlemen I ever met in my life. And if anybody has an epitaph they can say about something, that he was the kindest and finest gentleman I ever met. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I never worked with Guy, I never met him, but speaking as a fan, yes. Guy Williams was my one and only idol. Yes. Despite Tyrone Power, yes. <laughs> despite any of the really handsome men and great actors in Hollywood, there was something about Guy that was striking. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for the support. <laughs> when I was seven years old, on Halloween, I was dressed as Zorro, but I wasn't just Zorro, I was Guy Williams as Zorro. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, Guy Williams was the personification of charisma and the epitome of the all-American hero. And all you have to do is look and watch. He's a great human being. Thank you. together, the internet. A lot of us grew up with Zorro or Lost in Space. Yeah, Hi. Hi. Hi, <laughs> and you know we all kind of said we like this person. We, you know, when we, in the 1950s for those of us are that old, was one of the, <laughs> yeah, one of the first shows we saw was Zorro. And there was something about that show that captured our imaginations. And whether we thought about it all these years, or thought about it again, because of syndication, it's amazing. And some of us that are the age that I am, they have kids that just got the internet, or we finally got the internet because it convinced our husbands to get it. And one of the first things we did after the, learning the word Yahoo <laughs> was to type in the word Zorro, or Guy Williams, or Lost in Space. And in the last four or five years, we have come from around the country and around the world to find out that we have a very common bond and interest. And for us fans to have meeting the son and the family of Guy Williams, his co-workers, unbelievable. God love the internet. God, <laughs> God love Guy Williams. Thanks everybody for being here.
Kathy Frankrig. You know, I, I have been, I've known, um, you know, I originally got introduced to Guy Williams uh, through the uh, Disney Zorro, which I enjoyed on my own. But I've developed a new appreciation for Guy Williams being associated for more than 20 years with this lady. And for you spouses and mates out there, hopefully you have um, inherited the enjoyment I've gotten from this, just being an observer. And I'm enjoying today as much, I think, as the fans are. So thank you all. Thank you all for coming. Again, thank you all for, for being here. I'm not brushing everybody out, I just want everybody to have a good time, but I didn't want this to stand here all alone. So. Um, my mom, Janice, my sister, Tony, and nephew, Nando, all just really appreciate it. And Nando, come here, buddy, come here. So what do we have to say to these nice folks that came all the way to see you? You know, well, Guy Williams was very nice. He was kind of like Jesus, but <laughs> everyone, I need to say something. Okay, okay. Um, oh, Mom. Mom, if you want, you can come up. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take the mic back now. <laughs> Thank you, Nephew Nando. There you have it. I couldn't have said, you know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much again uh, from all our hearts, from our, the deepest part of our hearts. Thank you. Hey Bob, that was that, that was right there. That was really nice. Thank you. So, so Rob, Robot Memories three? Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Give me a year. A year. In <laughs> DVD. In DVD, absolutely, because it'll last longer. <laughs> day this is for us. We will never forget it. And uh, it's just so full of love in this room that I'm just overwhelmed. Just totally overwhelmed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.